podcasting from Chico, California, tucked in between some of Northern California's best freshwater fisheries. This is the Barbless Podcast, a podcast about NorCal fly fishing, guiding, fisheries management, and sustainability. If you have ideas or any questions for the show, leave the guys a voice message on the Barbless Podcast hotline, area code 530-636-2523. Also check out http colon slash slash podcast.barbless.co, where you can download past episodes and show notes. Be sure to follow them on Instagram at barbless.co and connect with them on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash barbless.co. Here's your hosts, Chad Alderson and Nick Hanna. Fish on. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Barbless Podcast. This is going to be a pretty cool uh, episode. We uh, have our friends... Hogan Brown and Chuck Reagan. Um, first part of this episode, you'll hear Chuck's killer music. Uh, make sure to check them out on uh, iTunes. Chuck Reagan, uh, The Flame and the Flood. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> kitchen sinks I need you like I need my help in this world and out on myself I keep walking to see the next mile keep on praying for a stranger's smile hand to hold and a path well lit a door to close and a place to sit on this earth hey welcome to another episode of the barbless podcast I am your co-host Chad Alderson, I've got Nick Hanna in the. Uh, oh, I'm the host the today. Well, I, I'm the I, wanted to, I wanted to be a little more democratic about it. Just go, you know, two guest hosts or because you st- you're stealing the mic all the time. That's fine. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I read that. Um, so we <laughs> we've got a couple guests today. Um, one you guys heard already, so we're not going to talk to him too much. But uh, <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> but the other one's new. Uh, we got Chuck Reagan in the house. Chuck, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks well, for thanks for opening the front door for th- me. Thanks for coming, and also Hogan Brown. Hogan, hey, what's thanks up? for having me back. Not much, man. Just uh, sitting here with Chuck and you guys. These two guys are the shock and awe of the Striper game. <laughs> <laughs> we try, we try. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we always ask whenever we have someone on new. We've been fishing lately. Uh, yesterday I was, I was on the sack up by, up by Redding for a couple hours with some buds, um, Matt Fermento and Darren Deal. Darren Dealy. Yeah. Yeah. Did and, you guys uh, catch any steelies? It was fun, man. We, we tangled with some fish and ate some, <clears throat> ate some stone crab claws from Florida. I saw, <laughs> I saw that. I saw, yeah, I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anthony Carusco uh, lent us one of his boats, so we got out for a couple hours, and it was just fun, man. And lot, you guys did the lower of, sack, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. We, we didn't we didn't run too far, or fish too long or too hard, but it was just nice for me. I you know I I don't ever get up there, and uh, it's a pretty special, pretty special zone, man. What uh yeah. what 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 were you doing in Reading? Playing playing shows. I mean, I'm out. <clears throat> the the past few days have been um doing a little tour that was all booked around this show that we're doing tonight uh down in uh uh sacramento you and Hogan? Cast Hope. oh yeah, yeah 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 that's yeah. right yeah so um and originally <clears throat> originally the idea was just to kind of set up a bunch of shows just to um uh raise some more awareness for that show and bring some more funds in to get my buddies to come out and play and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I'm, I did basically a, a four, four day banger, you know, cool. kind of little run. Uh, but it's been a little nuts cause I've had guide trips set up and like, you know, it started a few days ago and I worked on the Delta, you know, meeting clients at six thirty, and then off the water at, 
whatever, 3, 3.30. Load all your stuff and, up. And yeah, just button it all up, get the boat plugged in and on the lift. And then I ran to San Jose, you know, played that show. And it was pretty good down there. And turn around, slept in a jack-in-the-box parking lot and, <laughs> and met clients at 6.30 the Rin next morning. Rinse and, and repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then back out, you know, that day and then played Berkeley, which was the night before last night. And uh, yeah, and then you know, and then ran up there and did some what, fun, some fun fishing. What, so. What's the name of your band for the people that don't uh, don't may not even know who you are? <clears throat> well, this stuff that I'm doing is uh, you know I I'm a songwriter. I'm a singer songwriter, um, but I've played in a, a rock and roll band that we've had going since '94 called Hot Water Music. And, uh, you know, but most of the stuff that I'm doing, like, like tonight and on these shows, mm -hmm. I just play under Solo. my name, Chuck Reagan. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We, uh, I, I saw you, uh, play at the cast help event at Sierra Nevada and it was awesome. I'm like, this dude can really sing. Oh, <laughs> and my wife's like, Oh my kind. God. She, it was like, Hey babe, chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I turned her seat. I turned her seat. <laughs> Chuck oh, has that yeah. effect on women. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> Uh, so cool. what so let, let's go back like um how did how did you get into how did you get into fly fishing or did it start mm -hmm. with fly fishing right out of the gate or did you who got I've been, you into it i mean i've been fishing my brother my mm -hmm. younger brother um you know we've been fishing fishing has has been just a massive part of our lives since as long as we can remember um my my father uh moved us around a lot in an early age uh i was i was born in texas uh, just outside of Houston and we moved around a lot. My dad was a pro golfer. So, oh, wow. uh, he would kind of different club jobs or university coaching jobs. Um, but we went from Texas to Lilburn, Georgia, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Lafayette, Louisiana, and then down to Florida all before the age of 12. It's like you were in the military almost. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. But, uh, but the whole point of all that, uh, to relate it to fishing, is my dad was a pro golfer. And for years, I mean, he was big time in, uh, you know, in the late 50s and all through the 60s, Ryder Cup team player. Just he was a badass. So he, was a, he was a G. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, But I think he uh, secretly wanted to be a pro bass angler. You know? <laughs> oh. he, he was, like, nuts about bass fishing. And we've so that's, that was always a huge part of our life. Um uh, he's a Daytona boy, and so his parents, my grandparents, lived on the intercoastal, uh, right out, right in South Daytona there. So growing up there, uh, when we were in Florida, you know, we had those opportunities for redfish and striper and trout and everything right out the, uh, right on the back deck, you know. Um, and then on my mama's side, we're we're all Cajun folks from, she's from Basil, Louisiana, tiny fly speck Cajun town. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, my mama and papa, they were rice farmers and eventually became ranch hands and worked on his ranch outside of Kyle, Texas, where the Blanco River ran through that. And, you know, so pretty much my point is in every, anywhere where we were is mostly in the southeastern region of the, it, it always kind of went back to fishing and music so fishing golf water nearby yeah. yeah always and so you know i mean that's been in my life forever but but um i it wasn't <clears throat> compared to a lot of my buddies you know that i i fish with um i i would say i'm relatively new and green to fly fishing you know uh, probably compared to you know some of these guys you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh probably I don't know, 15, 16 years ago, my brother sent me a, sent me a shoe box full of material and a vice. And he was living in Colorado at the time. And he was like, dude, check it out, man. You know, I've been making this stuff. And, and he was sending me these flies that he was making and telling me how great it was of, you know, basically creating this pattern mm -hmm. and then taking it out and catching fish There's on it. And the, and the feeling that you get when you, you know, you tie something and then you, yeah, it. Yeah. I, I can attest to that. Cause I just started tying flies this year. Yeah. And, um, when you catch your first fish on a fly, you tied, there's yeah. like this certain satisfaction you get that goes beyond just angling. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Full circle. 
Yeah, now circle. there's like this there's this craftsmanship and art art artistry to the sport that you didn't even think of when yeah. you got into it, you know? And yeah. so it's been it's been really cool. Absolutely. Yeah, so you know, my brother and Paul my brother Paul had and at the same time he sent me I can't even remember what kind of rod it was. I remember it was like a little Aku, Akuma reel or something. He had sent me, and that was kind of my first setup, you know, and uh, would just get out in the yard and messing around. And and uh, but at at that time, I was living, I was living in uh, uh, Florida, you mm-hmm. know, and but in a transition, just fell in love with a California girl and was about to move to California, and then, you know. I messed around with the fly rod a little bit, but you know, wherever I was, you know, there for me it was such a learning curve, and I wasn't around anybody who was doing it. Right. Um, you know, I just kind of always went back to my gear, conventional stuff. Well, when, when stuff you when until, you moved to California, did you have any preconceptions of what the angling was going to be like before you got here? And if you did, like, how does what's the what's your mental state now in yeah. terms of California fishing? Yeah, to be honest, uh, that was the one thing I was really bummed out when uh, when I moved moved out was to leave. You know, I had I had a couple good handfuls of real good brothers and sisters there that I was bummed to leave. Yeah, but the fishing. You know, where I was living, I was living in Micanopy at the time, uh, which is northern Florida, and we were just surrounded, you know, and I mean, either coast was an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, okay, whoa. so we were right smack dab in the middle. So whoa. we had the Gulf, and my stomping grounds over there were around Cedar Key, Shell Mound, Deer Island, Snake Island. I don't know if any Naples? of that makes is sense. That near Naples? Horseshoe, that's a little, uh, that Naples is south. Okay. Um, but I li- used to live in Sarasota. You know, we lived yeah. in Sarasota for about eight years. So we fished, you know, kind of all around there. I mean, in Florida, it was all, it didn't, for us, inshore, offshore, salt water, fresh water, right. you know, flip a coin, you know. That was literally what we used to do some nights at the certain times a year. Yeah. You know, where it's like, hey, what are we doing? And like, I don't know. We could go do this or we can do this. <laughs> and, and we would literally flip a coin like heads, you know, heads salt, tails fresh. What are we doing? You know? Yeah, we kinda and, have hey. that in Chico <laughs> a, a bit, but just with obviously fresh water. We got coastal stuff five hours away. But yeah. But mm-hmm. it's you know, it's it's pretty cool living in Chico and just being oh yeah having the same sort of thing. An hour and a half anywhere you can get into some fish, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were That's pretty cool. spoiled. I mean, I mean uh you know, we have a, a ton of there's some north rivers uh, uh in Florida there that um striper migrate into. Mm-hmm. Uh, I so didn't know we, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I thought they were all up up north. Negative. Yeah, we used to just hammer them down there. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, there there was one in particular uh called Rodman's Reservoir. Um and it is man, is it a special zone. Just it is so fishy and and a uh, little off the beaten path, you know, pretty well known for tournament anglers and, you know, bass anglers are quite familiar with it. But the Oklawaha River flows through it and uh, striper come into the St. John's and they make their way down into chasing balls of shad, you know. So mm. back then uh, it was all about, I mean, we weren't even fishing artificials, you know, it was all live bait. You know, <laughs> so we, you know, our, our tackle box literally consisted of, you know, five gallon bucket and a cast net and a box of hooks and a Calcutta 400 and an eight foot flipping stick. You know what I mean? And 20 pound fluorocarbon. <laughs> that, was, that was our, that was our program. But yeah, we'd run around and we'd chase, you know, kind of get out early on the glass and chase balls of shad and, you know, just kind of that true to me like hunter gatherer you know find, <laughs> catch the little fish to catch and, the big and fish. I, I know yeah. when when i was on the delta with you and you and uh with you and hogan um you you were saying watch out for watch out for birds you know because mm-hmm. they're they're going after the bait fishes it's mm-hmm. the same same situation in florida is that how you guys could follow the shad absolutely yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah you you would get all kinds of you know uh wildlife you know keying in keying into that that bait and uh yeah, I mean, uh, the fish will, one way or the other, will tell you where they are, you know, if Mother Nature permits, you know, yeah. if, the, if it's not too windy or whatnot. But, so is that how you uh, you met Hogan? You were you came out in California and you wanted that striper action and 
You wanted to, and I, I <laughs> he's got a peg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's not how it went down. Yeah, we uh, we met via social media. To be honest with you, like, yeah. uh, I I was a fan of Hot Water Music since shit probably ninety five. Uh, we used to one of my really it's it's kind of weird how life works out, but the guy that got me into fly fishing, um, to the degree to which I am in it now really kind of got me, I guess, back into it after you, uh, there is definitely that phase in high school where it wasn't super cool to do. So I didn't do it as much, but one of my buddies in high school got me back into it. I'd say probably like sophomore year, um, to just hardcore into it. And he also introduced me to hot water music and we used to bang around in this little old, ford mustang like (laughs) 5.0 like you know on the wrong day it looks like a drug dealer on the on a good day it looks cool you know uh listening to you know hot water music and going fly fishing and so i actually saw i think it was nick right nick had posted a picture of, oh yeah, yeah, Nick, you posted that 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 death picture <laughs> on the That's, Narrows. Holy, I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are that. you yeah. guys kidding? That's no, no, how no, you no. Guys, no, 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 no. That's the glue. That's yeah, that's holy, the glue. Holy smoke! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You you posted that one. Uh, yeah, the pontoon that yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I I just like I near before on death. That. That's yeah. That's like seven years this month. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, commented, yeah, yeah. I commented on that and then Hogan commented and was like, is, are, is this the same Chuck from Hot yeah, Water or like, whatnot? And, and then like, <laughs> I'm about, and we I, started communicating. That's the that's trip. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah we, I guess. We yeah. So it, basically I saw Chuck Reagan comment. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I saw Chuck that's Reagan funny. comment on one of Nick's photos and was yeah. like, there's no freaking way Nick Hanna knows Chuck Reagan. Like, what the? <laughs> how do I not know Chuck? Re- and so I was basically like, hey, dude, you know, you got a free seat in my boat anytime you want. And like li- you called literally within like a couple hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I picked up the phone. Yeah. You got to strike while the iron's hot on. The <laughs> oh, dude. Like and I, I'll never forget. I was sitting in my office and my wife comes in and she's like, you're on the phone with. I'm like, Chuck Reagan. <laughs> She's like, shut the hell. State Farm. <laughs> yeah, State I'm like, State Farm. <laughs> so yeah, and, and and realistically, ever since then, dude, we've been We're pretty in khakis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've been pretty fast friends, man. I, I That's would, rad. Yeah, I would say there's probably not a day or two that goes by that yeah. we're not talking wow, yeah it's funny so cool. i mean it's it's amazing yeah. you know <laughs> i think man it's so life's so crazy how it happens i mean you you really never it happens know for a reason sometimes so. yeah yeah man, yeah, yeah, you, yeah you never know you know whatever you walk around the corner you know around the bend and you don't know if that person that you're going to run into could very well end up being just a crucial you know just friend in your life for the rest of your life mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's, well you guys have done it funny a, how just being together done a lot out. for cast hope and working together like yeah. that it's oh it's yeah pretty awesome. i mean well, the, the back side of it is it's like it's it sounds like a weird way but i mean me and chuck like we're probably best i mean we are best friends i mean chuck's probably my best friend you know i got a, a short list but there's no one i talk to more or like feel connected I mean, you guys have a love for music and striper yeah it's an That's odd right. well and, it, it just, and chuck's right dude like we it came get any more yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> we, 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 the paths in life that we find ourselves on is very similar so we've connected on a lot of levels i mean the the striper and music's pretty thin in the connection so it's it's cool. Pretty yeah. cool yeah i i i would say that I mean, you know, I found a lot of inspiration through Hogan with what he does and how he balances school teaching and guiding, right? And for one, was like he was, mm. he was uh, pivotal for me in, in guiding. I mean, it, Cast Hope was the main driving force that got me into guiding in the first place. Oh, really? Um, you know, to me, it was always one of those things that was in the back of my mind, almost more like a retirement plan, you know, like, <laughs> like I can't be in a tour bus forever. You know, yeah, I can't, yeah. I don't want to do this forever. And, and I had always just kind of thought about it. I would hire guides or, you know, I had friends that were fishing guides and I was like, man, 
you know, Matt Coles, Gilligan's guide service up in truck. He was another, another one. I used to just kind of, you know, look at how he lived and guiding and, and I know it's tough. I, I know, especially now, you know, it is, it's, it's a tough gig, you know, but it can be very rewarding, you know, being independent like that. Um, but yeah, it was always one of those things where it was in the back of my head, but it wasn't until, you know, uh, Hogan approached me and was like, hey, listen, man, you know, you got the boats. You're out there all the time. Why don't you come help us out with these kids? And showed uh, showed me the Cast Hope organization. I looked into the, into the program mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, related with it so much and just connected with it, just fell in love with the whole ethic and the idea of why that program needs to exist and why this program needs to you know, grow. Um, and so, I mean, but that was, uh, that was a catch. He's like, if you want to come help with the kids, so you got to get a guide license and go get insured and get a bond and da 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 and kind of get all. And I said, right on, let's do it. And just kind of started going down that path. And, uh, man, I the love rabbit it. hole. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, but I, I mean, it's funny how it all worked out. Cause right around that same time, you know, my wife and I, uh, we had talking. We were talking of kids in the future and everything. And I'm, That's right. And I'm yeah. going well, you know, when that happens, I'm definitely not gone for six, seven, eight weeks at a time anymore. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be touring anymore and be an absent dad. And, um, you know, so uh, yeah. So it, I mean, it just started becoming more and more of. Uh, you know, not only not only something that I wanted to do, but something that I felt like I needed to do. Um, you know, not only for myself, uh, but you know, for my family. And yeah, and, I think part uh, of the connection was the too program. is I was in that place. He was not too many years before we met in the like that crisis of conscious where you're like, okay, I'm on the road. Th- 280 some days a year and mm-hmm. like you can't be a good dad and a good husband doing this like and so I I kind of I think I spoke from experience when I gave him advice so I, I it was it was a weird deal but it was very it I think we made a lot of sense to each other mm-hmm. so well what do you guys have any tips for other people that are trying to live you know I would say a duplicity kind of a situation with their they're guiding and they're doing something else like time management like what's the most important thing like how do you guys manage your time don't drink go to bed early yeah <laughs> that would that would help I don't, you know i, I, I i've always told help. him is i've always told him and i tell myself that it, your life will be out of balance at various times but just always find the way to bring it back to balance mm-hmm. you know what i mean um and it's man I, I struggle with it every day with all the stuff that i do and i know chuck does too we talk mm-hmm. about it all the time you know yeah. but it's it if you have the desire or the pull, the yin to the yang, mm-hmm. you're always going to pull yourself back to the center, you know. And that that's, that's so. It sounds like there's introspection. There is. Oh gosh, you have to have that kind of a trait in your personality to begin I, with. I think to so. To yeah. Be successful yeah. at yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the things that we're doing is not. It's 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 it it's similar to being an independent contractor. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's very little security yep. in it. Um, you know, there's very little, uh, you know, curriculum or kind of schedule. Like you have to go get that. You gotta, you have to build that and make yeah. it. But when you see somebody find, catch their first fish, especially a kid, the passion and sharing that passion, oh, it's just, man. it's yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a drug. Oh, it, it is. Know, fully. It is. And it's, it's and any struggle up else. into that point seems irrelevant once right. you see that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out, man. I'm, I mean, it's <laughs> like this, you know, finding the balance between, you know, I I love guiding. And, and even though even though I, I feel like I'm the new guy, I'm like a rookie, you know, kind of green guy, whatever. I mean, I feel like that I've been doing it a lot longer than I have, which I have, but just haven't been you know, getting paid for it, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, um, you know, I absolutely love it. I love it. Like, you know, be just having the connection with the outdoors that I do. Like, it's something that I feel like I, I need, I need to do, you know, I get a little bit, I'm sure we all do. We kind of have that in common, 
you know, we get kind of off kilter if, if we don't have that, oh, yeah. you know, feeding, you know, what, what we need. Yeah. I start uh, to get the shakes about after four days. <laughs> yeah. Typically is when it sets yeah. in. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm still trying to Hot find like mm-hmm. how to, how to kind of balance, you know, because I'm still, it's like I got one foot on the stage and, and doing the music business stuff. And, and that's, awesome. that's a whole nother animal in itself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a million blessings and curses out there in just in that world, you know, and, uh, yeah, but you know, for me, like I have a wonderful fan base and I have people that, that I pay and people that I work with that, you know, there's almost a responsibility there too, to kind of keep it going. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, man, it's, it's trying, it's, it can be maddening and hard on my family. It's, It's really hard on my wife. Um, my my son now is uh, over two and a half, and uh, looks like he's getting into fishing. <clears throat> oh yeah, dad. man! Yeah, oh, he looks he, like a little stick. <laughs> he he held his he held on to his first smallmouth when he was thirteen months old. Whoa! Yeah, like awesome. we had him in a little in a little tube. Uh, oh yeah, that's you know, right the, on the South Fork. Those, yeah, the the South yeah. Fork of the Yuba, uh, right below the old cover bridge, right yeah, there. Yeah, that first big bend in the summertime. It's a great it's a great. Pl- place to go hike in picnic and there's a ton of little smallmouth there and they'll eat anything and everything you know and you can just sit there and throw anything from little buggers or hares here you name it you know they're gonna eat it you catch every single one of those fish in there probably some of them twice you know <laughs> um but we had him in a little tube and with the umbrella you know a little harness and That's he's like classic, floating in the tube and we had just had this little three weight and just kind of catching these smallies and just ripping just put it in his hand and he'd get drug around by about a <laughs> 10 inch small mouth <laughs> <laughs> pretty That's fun awesome. where are you liking uh so where are you liking the guide at these days yeah so my main, you like to fish the yuba and the, and the delta Is those yeah yeah for sure um you know, the Yuba's out our back door, um, and typically I'd be on the Yuba a lot more, uh, but... Uh, it's been a tough little fishery, it's, huh? It's been tough. I mean, I I mean, I can't knock it. I mean, the numbers are They're there. great. By Yuba yeah. standards, right. the numbers are incredible. Right. Right? And this means you know, but, a great future, potentially. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing the future. But the the way the river was restructured after that, that mass last year, uh, or early this year's big big blowout yeah um it's gorgeous man i mean it's absolutely beautiful and it looks like it's great better better habitat for salmon now Mm -hmm. than it was right um it was like when when Mm -hmm. it blew out at uh when it went to 30 a while ago and it it kind of scraped all the runs you know and it, it almost seemed like it just got just flat everywhere and then when it went to whatever ninety whatever it was, some uh, god awful. It crested yeah. it at like eighty something. Yeah, it, it yeah. got big. Yeah, yeah, it was savage through there. Yeah, well, it actually, um, to me, it just recut it and reshaped it, and to me, is better than it was before when it blew out on the th- at the thirty. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it's it's beautiful. You know, the numbers are good, and we've been having just some smoke and dry fly days out there. But, you know, fit small fish, you know, a lot of bugs got wiped out for a little bit, but it's coming They're back. Starting just to come like, back, yeah. oh, yeah, for sure. I It'll haven't been on it this year, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to before the end yeah. of the year. Yeah. Just get out there. January is a good time to fish it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. I like the winter. Good time yeah. for streamers. Winter's a good time. Good time to rip streamers. It's, yeah. That's and try not like to hit to the back of your head. Like, yeah. uh, on your, <laughs> when I was just wear your eye protection, Anderson. Yeah. Just wear your eye Dude. protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it's um, embarrassing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's an embarrassing day for Chad. <laughs> We're all proud of you. <laughs> I, I recovered, though. Yeah. Yeah. The Yuba. And um, if I'm not doing that, I'm uh, on the feather, but uh, I don't get to the feather too much. I, I love it, but. Um, you know, I, for the most part, uh, lately I've been in just in the in the motorboat. So, um, I I switch back and forth, or have been switching a lower unit back and forth between a jet and a prop. Mm. Uh, so, you know, when the jet's on there, I've been uh, working um, 
the rivers for striper with hogan and uh, absolutely love that uh, that's yeah. probably my favorite thing in the world to do yeah. you know in the summertime it is just wonderful and that's probably my <laughs> my favorite <laughs> right you know but uh yeah and then when the prop goes back on uh, i'm i've been lucky enough to uh work with some great guys down uh in the delta and uh and just learning as much as I can down there. I mean, that's a that's a whole animal in itself, um, the California Delta. But just a ab- absolutely tremendous uh, fishery, tons of tons of potential there, you know. Um, and it's to me fishing that tidal water is just really familiar, you know. Coming from In Florida, Florida yeah. when we used to fish. Uh, a lot of the redfish and trout and like the zones that I was talking about around show mountain and stuff. Um, it's back there. It's kind of like a spider web, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you know, there's certain, there's certain bars and islands and whatever that'll f- only fish on an outgoing or only fish on an incoming, you know what I mean? Tidewise. And, yeah. Tidewise. Yeah. So yeah. just knowing all, you know, kind of doing it like that. So when I started working in the Delta, it was very similar kind of looking at the Delta just like I was looking at hunting, you know, redfish. Um, just instead of instead of oyster bars, it's, you know, tulies and... Uh, yeah, he's pretty humble you know, about that, dude. Down. Like, most of the people that... And Nick, and Nick, I'm sure, knows this, that fish the Yuba, the Feather, or even the rivers for stripers, like, you don't get transplanted into the Delta and find success very easily. Like I don't even know how to read a tide chart or like, <laughs> right. I mean, so, so he's like, able to leverage all the Florida. Oh gosh. You know, he took to the Delta, like nobody easy. I've ever seen it. Water, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's hanging out there with guides that have been doing it. 10, yeah. 20 well, years. We, you know? I met, I met one of them from the intimidator fishing crew. Yeah, and I got guy. to see my first and last mud sucker of my life. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that freaked you out. Oh, dude. That, God, that freaked dude. you out a little more than I thought it should. To <laughs> be like, honest with you, it's like an appendage on the bottom of a stomach that can <laughs> clamp onto you is kind of gross. <laughs> but um, that was fun. Well, one of you know when, one of my takeaways from when I met them is like you can learn a lot from bait guys that you can apply mm-hmm. to to fly fishing. Do oh, you yeah. guys? Yeah. Would you guys agree? And if so, what? Absolutely. You know, what, what are the dark side? 150%. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I would be honest. I would be, uh, I'd say 95% of what I know about fishing for bass, stripers, I've learned from the conventional world and yeah. fishing with conventional guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I know that I would never, like, I would never rip a streamer the way that I do. I would never like work a you know a fly the way that I do if I haven't if I hadn't uh, started fished, out with fished yeah. a, well fished a lot of live bait yeah. and watched the reaction sure. of a fish going after I tell clients you know, that all the time you got to yeah. imagine you're a bait fish you know right? totally you got to you got to right. picture yourself as that bait fish and yeah. try to yeah. mimic yeah. it exactly you know? but what really you know kind of what really uh, when I think about it a lot and when I explain it to clients. You know, um, and I don't know if you've ever live bait fish, you know, at some point of the day, you're going to run out of bait and you have that one last bait, you know what I mean? And it's done and it's dead. So you have to work that, that live bait just it's like to weaken at Bernie's on the water. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally Dude, that, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> yeah, analogy. That's a good, <laughs> nice that's work. A good way to put it. Nice Thank work. you. Thank but you. but I mean you end up you dance. end up seeing you end up seeing movie. like in in real time you know how these predators are reacting to your reactions you know what I mean and uh, but by doing that I mean I've learned a ton and and I wouldn't I wouldn't fish streamers the way that I do if I hadn't uh, I'm getting kind of excited about that. technology and all the cameras getting smaller and smaller and we're going to start learning so much about how yeah. these fish. Oh, well, that, that was, I was going to say that is one thing, yeah. you know, fishing conventional guys just by nature fish with a lot more technology. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. they understand fish finders, side scanners, yeah. down images. Dude, their anchors are more than most of our boats. Exactly. Exactly. Their anchor systems. Yeah, you know? totally. What so, are those things called? The harpoon in the ground? The power pole? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you could buy a, a six used, grand. Yeah. You those. could buy a used drift it's, boat a for the like, price. Yeah. Of a, a set's like six grand. Yeah. So uh, th- I think they're. 
uh, my experience is their knowledge base is not necessarily so much about like, I mean, I think Chuck's absolutely right. And there's definitely something to that, but most fly fishermen's knowledge base usually is based around what fly to use, how to move the fly and really maybe reading the water, but that's where a lot of people kind of thin out yep. that, that gets to be thinner knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas most bass guys have just plethoras of knowledge based on the technology that they use, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, whereas, you know, and it's know. usually, usually starting with temperature. Yeah. I mean the stuff yeah. that I learned, I mean, I remember listening to Bobby Barrick talk one time, not to me, but I was kind of there when he was having the conversation and he was talking about weed species and about oxygen content around various weed beds <laughs> and how John Sherman, the guy that I was with, was an idiot to fish around a specific weed bed because the oxygen content at that time of day was 2%. Like, stuff that I'm just like, good God. (laughs) Like, you know, so just the knowledge base that these guys have is, it it is dumbfounding at times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, there's a lot to be learned, I would say, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I I I hope you know, the majority of the time I have a fly rod in my hand, you know, but I still go back and I love to I love to I just love to fish. And I have people that I go fish with and my brother or you know, family friends and whatnot that are are still gear fishing and every time I have that opportunity, I love to do it just cuz I want to see how they do it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh there's there's a fellow that um, you know, some of the other fisheries that I do are uh, a lot of the foothill lakes. You know, we have Ingle, uh, we, we, we're surrounded by them. Ingle you put Bright. your prop back on when you run that? I, it doesn't it matter. Doesn't, yeah, I, mean, I see all, you run that it's all, all quite clean. a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's all clean. Good, great bass fishing in there, huh? It can be phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Bullard's Bar? You we, we got Bullard's. We have yeah. Scott's Flats. We have Collins, Ingle Bright. Um, Three, I mean, isn't like three years running that uh, the yeah that spotted bass record's been broken on yeah. boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's We're, a couple pro. Uh, there's a couple pro bass guys that live in Auburn. Mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking of one. Mm-hmm. He was at the Delta Day this year. The young guy. I want to do it on a fly, huh? Yeah, hey, that's. That's yeah. the goal. That's, That's what, the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've talked about it, and some buddies have gone out and been like, "Let's do this, man!" Like with that in mind, like yeah. let's let's get a record. Yeah, because I mean, what's the fly? What's the spotted bass fly I, rod I've record? I've been trying. Do you know what it is? I've been trying to find out. I can't I, imagine you know, there because we've caught them. Well, like we've caught them up to you know six and a half, seven pounds. Yeah. on a fly, you know, Google and. Real quick. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't figured out. But so you're using uh, short rods with little cork, putting your finger on, like almost like drop, drop shot technique. Is that are you guys doing that on the lake or? Well, um, for what what I do, I I kind of go back and forth. It, it depends on the time of year. Yeah, it depends on what the fish are doing. Um, but uh, you know, we we love throwing frogs and poppers. Oh, cool! Up on the rocks. Yeah. Um, fishing, uh, feather game changers, all different types of streamers at various depths and whatnot. Um, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm hunting, I'm looking for the small mouth or the spotties, Mm -hmm. you know, we do have some large mouth up there, but to me, uh, you know, there's nothing I'd, I'd catch a spotted bass over. Right, the rest of them any any time. When I worked know. at the Chico Fly Shop, we built this sweet rod for the one of the Chico State bass anglers, and oh, yeah. uh, it was like a short eight footer, mm-hmm. and then with very little cork on it, so mm-hmm. that he could put his hand, you know, finger on the on the blank. Yeah, it was a, it was a. Bitchin', I had Larry. I had rod. you guys build me a, a seven oh, weight like interesting. same deal. Oh really? You I still, still have it? it. Yeah, it's a two piece. It's dude, I fish oh. it a lot. Nice, yeah. interesting. That's why. Yeah, I so. It we're doing we're doing a lot of that and then in the winter time which is something that we've just been trying to trying to sell uh clients on just because it's awesome it is fish and float and fly you know um some people are privy to it you know but a lot of people you know don't don't do it it's a hard sale it's a hard sell for for yeah. trout bums you know what, what i mean what, what is that exactly time, so. Fish float and fly. You're basically fishing. Uh, you're fishing balanced minnow patterns under indicators. You know, and there was a uh, under a bobber. 
You it's know, a spin fishing a, technique over debris, yeah. like find debris, like get that but thing on, over a, the on a fly well, rod. Not necessarily. No. Yeah, there's you. You can do it on on anything really. Yeah. It it originated uh, actually Charlie Knuckles yeah. uh, in East Tennessee, I believe it was, uh, came up with this method, and basically he was crappie fishing in in the winter time and kept getting busted off with these big small on you know these big small mouth and spotted bass or whatnot, and just kind of put two and two together that this is a great method to fish for lethargic bass 11.2 mm. pounds oh yeah in Shoot, california I got a, spotted I got a, bass I with got a fly on, rod on a fly? no 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 oh no okay. i'm talking about no. on a fly no but yeah this that's the record okay. from what i'm seeing so i get I'm that kind of segues into a question i have then because yeah. i've got a buddy and i think i've told you hogan that's got a he's got a private lake here oh yeah yeah by yeah, the yeah, airport yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and no one ever touches it and it's big it was it's a water ski lake but it's deep. yeah it's deep yeah and he's he took he took bass from florida and transplanted oh, them florida here strain, yeah. florida yeah, strainers way back like 10 years ago and he said okay. there's eight 10 pounders in there i believe it and we're yeah. supposed to go fish it next week and i have no idea how, oh. to, how to approach that oh, at this time well, of year you, that's no problem you, you just, just ask you me call, or hey, you call Logan <laughs> and, I, and uh you know we'll shoot yeah. we'll bring the sandwiches even. <laughs> i mean you don't if worry you about go, it I'll, I'll talk to him or if you want to go i could probably make it happen because i've got a spot open i got a seat open okay yeah, yeah whatever Sounds good and but i would probably, probably fish only... that float and fly i mean that, uh, that yeah yeah that's what i was thinking that's why i asked well especially it's a, this time of year it's a it's a it's a heck of a method to fish um you know in in cold water you know when fish are suspended and you know but anyhow that's that's where it came from you know from guys kind of uh realizing you know hey you know here's these these suspended bass that are not moving far to chase anything Mm -hmm. so i mean you know even slowing down you know their drop shot rigs or you know everything like at certain times a year where those fish were just boom they're just there you know what i mean they're not going anywhere and fishing like this uh you know the way it the way i believe it's so success successful is it's you know it basically imitates exactly what bait fish are doing uh one thing that uh we forget or i feel is easy for fly anglers to forget when fishing cold water you know i mean part of the joy and part of the lure and part of the 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 love that we have for fly fishing is casting and stripping and yeah, doing yeah, yeah. everything that we do but what we need to realize is man when that water cools down and the fish become you know the our targeted species are lethargic and they're not moving well guess what the bait fish is doing you know it's the same, same thing, thing yeah. like everything is in total slow motion down there like it is in slow motion uh so you know even though you're you may be just stripping a fly really slow it is so far out of place of what everything else looks like down there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So in fishing this float and fly method, you're suspending this pattern that's just barely, you know, it's just hanging there. With whatever current or whatever, you know, wake is on the water, like it's just kind of bobbing and moving. And that's something that you can't really do, you know, by you stripping a streamer or, right you know, that's one of my favorite ways to fish a lake uh, not favorite ways but most productive is little tiny indicator right mm-hmm. long leader yeah and just kind of a slow hand retrieve crawl yeah you know, with little tiny nymphs yeah over like a weed bed and you're gonna i mean the trout it's really eat. similar to yeah. like you're ta- like, like the like sharana bid yeah like you know those guys yeah 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 for sure because i came to it late chuck and a, mm-hmm. another guy that we work with and that guides for cast hope ryan williams have been doing it mm-hmm. a long time and I was when, like, dude, indicators for bass. Like, <laughs> when, <laughs> hey, when you guys, when you guys said Sharonamid, he like shook his head, like he knew what you're talking about. But I have no idea what you're talking about. Sharonamid, like so oh, Sharonamid, Sharonamid fishing. I still don't know. <laughs> it's a, it's like a big midge, like okay. a blood midge. Okay. You know, if you've heard of blood midge. Um, yep. But so one you of the say Sharonamid, it's not Coronamid. Coronamid, Sharon, I don't know. Coronamid. Uh, you say Coronamid, yeah. I say Sharon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so guys in the like the Pacific Northwest, like lake fishermen, fish these like crazy long leaders okay. over mud mm-hmm. with these, you know, multiple midge pupa. And I'm talking like ten to twenty feet drop off an indicator. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so but it's like it's not fun. Right. But it's 
productive. It's Deadly effective. Effective. So it looks like it's emerging from mm-hmm. the mud, basically. Yeah, and you exactly. just so, slow retrieve it over the top of a mud bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We call it jerking off the muskrat. You just <laughs> <laughs> well, that just got an explicit rating on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. The, the Ernie ones got this one buried. Don't okay. Worry. I, you know, when I see, yeah, I figured. <laughs> we we got to edit that one. It's going to take eight hours. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... It's a cool way to fish, man. I mean, and, uh, you know, it really shines in places like Oroville, you know, um, anywhere where that has that, you know, uh, basically what we're imitating when fishing that, especially in those places, is uh, Wakasagi, you know, the Japanese pond smelt. And, okay. uh, you know, that's that's basically what they're going after and what we're imitating and uh, and... It works well. I want to come check it out. Yeah. I, I mean, you fish everywhere else I do, so I can't trade any fishing to, but maybe duck can take you to a duck blind or something. <laughs> yeah. Some ducks. Yeah. We take, me to, take me to Lake Well, you did, <laughs> you did kind of inadvertently um, introduce him to his hetero life mate, so I think, <laughs> I, think he, I think he might owe you one. Yeah, maybe. It, you know, it sounds like when he was telling me about it, I, and I literally just got into it this year, I was like, you know, fishing indicators for bass kind of sounds like kissing your sister. You know what I mean? That sounds horrible. <laughs> but it's it, there's a lot of casting. You're hitting targets, and you what are. What if it's like, by marriage though? <laughs> then it's just weird. Uh, now we're back in Orville. <laughs> yeah, it, it's way fun. I, I I really when I the first time I did it was just a couple weeks ago with him, and I was like, That's cool. this is awesome. And you guys just slammed. Was that on Orville then? When yeah. You guys. Yeah. You'd posted something yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. And it, the lakes are pretty. I mean it. it yeah. I mean, we it's awesome. We, you don't see any boats. Uh, Ryan Williams, the cool part about that method to me is like it can kind of be catered for for any skill level at all. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, if I take a beginner out on to just to drift the Yuba, you know what I mean? Um, or do or I mean, Delta is even a better example. Like not everybody. There's such a big learning curve in picking up those 30 foot heads. And yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, yes. really? or <laughs> <it's> <laughs> you did great. Chad. Yeah, you did. <laughs> We're really proud uh, of you. <laughs> Thanks. You know, or, or like target casting and whatever, yeah. you know, the point is like, not everybody, if you get somebody that can't get it done, like they're, they're going to struggle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and fishing that float and fly, I can, I can take a, a absolute, totally green beginner, never touched a fly rod cast in hope kid. life, yeah. a cast mm-hmm. hope kid. And you know, turn that kid into a kid, you know, four hours later who just landed, you know, 20 25 that's awesome bass yeah. right yeah. yeah and but at the same time i can take an absolute stick just advanced angler to do that same method you know what i mean out there and they're still going to have a great time because their skill level is going to actually permit them to kind of fish even in riskier structure you know mm-hmm. make some more kind of you know, dynamic, like tighter cast into some of the, some of the crevices and the mm-hmm. rocks where some of these fish post up. But um, you're fishing like a live bait. Is that right? Underneath this thing? Or is it a, is there a bait? Is there a fly pattern? Oh it's no, a it's, fly, a fly. it's a fly. It's a fly pattern. Oh, okay. it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a jig. I mean, it looks my like buddies might put some bait on there, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's like a, it, it yeah. looks like a pond smelt basically. Yeah. Japanese pond smelt, okay. yeah, different than the Delta smelt, which okay. a lot of people okay. think are the same species, but it's two different. Thinner, Wakasagi is more of yeah. a thinner okay. pattern. I'll yeah, to, I'll have to give it a try. That's Waka, cool. yeah, Wakasagi was introduced uh, into the state of California in 1952, I believe. Yeah, and uh, they're in they, the sack. The stripers eat them. They are now. Yeah, they yeah. planted them in in a number of lakes as another forage for for the mm. planted trout. You know, just to help grow the population. And and uh, uh, some of them they it just didn't take. Um, you know, uh, in some of the reservoirs they planted in. But the ones that they actually survived in was uh, Spalding. They survived and Lake Shastina right mm-hmm. up, up, up north there and uh in the 70s they moved uh some from lake shastina into almanor and which is how we have them in orville right a lot of people so, mistake them for tui chubs in almanor and okay. it's it's a completely different species of mm-hmm. bait fish though i think yeah. there are tui chubs, tui or, chubs, chubs yeah. or whatever yeah. you call them sure. but the 
Yeah, Chewbacca it's a, chubs because it's Chewbacca it's, it's it's Star Wars season. <laughs> so. Totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're uh, you know as as far as I've you know read and researched, like they they can be pretty invasive too. You yeah. know, like they can wipe out like wherever wherever those things move in, like they're gonna they're gonna eat shad out of house and home. Mm-hmm. You were telling you me know, what is it because they, they eat, eat the micro plankton? Uh, well, or you yeah, were telling me the uh, other day ectoplankton. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they basically will feed on the same thing that kokanee do, which is that's a kind of a I don't know. I've t- I was talking to Dennis Pierce about this because he he kind of nerds out on wakasagi, <laughs> which gets me excited, you know, because you don't hear it, many people say that word. You I know thought it was I mean? a sushi cutter. Yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, I sat down with him, and he was like, you know what? I I heard you fish. You know, Orville, I would love to talk to you about Wakasagi. And I'm oh, yeah, let's talk about <laughs> Wakasagi, man. And, uh, but, you know, one thing that him and I were talking about was um, whether or not they're in Lake Inglebright, you know, because there's a lot of water from spalding that comes through Inglebright. Mm-hmm. And some people have said, no, well, there's nothing to hold them there. You know what I mean? There's, uh, there's, there's no food for them, yet we have kokanee in Inglebright. So, yeah. Hmm. Like and then they me, talked it, about Lord of the Rings. Yes, <laughs> totally nerded out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, um, that's a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Fun rabbit hole, though. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we were talking about earlier. You guys are headed down to Sacramento for a Cast Hope event. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, I do a lot of different fundraising for Cast Hope. Um, and I say about two years ago, uh, Chuck kind of had this idea of like, Hey, let's do a cast hope benefit concert. And, uh, I was like, wow. Okay. Um, it's a little different than an auction and a dinner, but, uh, I'm all in. So, um, we, with really all of Chuck's help, cause I haven't, you know, I play music and play in bands and stuff, but the level of throwing a concert that uh, we were talking about is well beyond my skill set. So Chuck really kind of called on a bunch of his friends last year. We, we put it on at Slim's in San Francisco, which is a pretty iconic mm-hmm. music venue. Um, yeah. And it was really <clears throat> Chuck calling all the people he knows and all his buddies to come out and play and Chuck's management. And um, yeah, we threw a rock concert and actually, you know, we made money last year. Went pretty, <laughs> went, awesome. went, went pretty yeah, well. So, yeah, it sounds great. so, it, awesome. you know, it was kind of one of those deals where I'm like, I'm going to throw a rock concert as a fundraiser. And I, I had to pitch it to my partner, Ryan, and the board and stuff. And they're kind of looking at you like, and I'm like, don't worry. Like, the, yeah. you know, and it, the big sales pitch was I told them about the bridge school benefit that Neil Young throws. And I'm like, hey, dude, you know, mm. I don't know. We may get there someday. Or, <laughs> you know. uh, but yeah. it was successful. We we made some money on it last year, you know, and um, I got the go ahead to kind of make it an annual thing at the the board gave me the heads up on it. And so this year we, we this made some change. This yeah, this year, year too. We made yeah. some changes. Um we changed awesome. venues. We we started working with one, one of Chuck's good buddies, Justin Norton, and mm-hmm. it, it is really, uh, I Justin, I think it's going to sell out this year. Yeah. I mean, it, it's and not to mention that Goldfield is yeah. fully given us the so having it at Slim's was great, but and the show did well, but it was also really expensive. You know what I mean? Like we had, it was a it was an education to why Chuck wants to start getting out of the record and touring business <laughs> yeah. is the amount of people yeah. that have their hands in the oh, pot yeah. in of the a value concert. chains. Huge. Yeah. So I, I had no yeah, idea, you know, maybe. so we, we, we gold fields in Sacramento Goldfields trading post downtown, I think with the help of Chuck and Justin, I mean, basically have said, Hey, we'll give you the venue for free. Oh, I mean, that awesome. was all them. They're, that's a they're, game changer. They support cast hope they're, Yeah, that's You know killer. what I mean? That wasn't, that wasn't, me pushing them to do it you know we suggested it yeah and uh they they stepped up to the plate and they're like look we're not taking a cut of anything all the money's going to cast hope so oh that's amazing and it's it's a game changer for an event like that Mm -hmm. yeah you know so 
Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to rally down there tonight. I, I want to go. It, yeah, come on. <laughs> come on down gonna, if you want. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have uh, Dave Hawes is uh, going to be playing, who's uh, – a buddy of mine, a just fantastic international touring musician, recording artist, uh, all around powerhouse of a dude singer. He's great. Yeah. Um, and then Inland is playing, and, um, and Hannah then, Jane Kyle from that's yeah. played. She's done a lot of stuff in Chico too. She's mm-hmm. a real good singer songwriter. Um, yeah. Chuck had gotten Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters too, but uh, we got we got bumped for Saturday Night Live for so, SNL. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we'll let them have it. They're, yeah, they're not the know. same yeah, since right. Ackroyd left anyway. I mean, so. It's Sacramento this time of year versus New York this time. You know. Like. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks, guys, for both coming. Um, Chuck, for sure. How, how can we get a hold of you on Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff? Instagram's easy. It's just Chuck Reagan, C H U C K R A G A N, no E. And, uh, yeah, my website is crflyfishing.com. Uh, pretty easy, crflyfishing.com. And everything, everything's there, you know, just kind of whatever. Yeah, so so follow there. Chuck on Instagram because he really needs the followers. <laughs> Jeez. <Yeah. laughs> what, what are you at now, like 40,000 or something? I don't pay attention. He's getting close. He doesn't maybe pay attention. The, maybe that's yes, a secret not to obsess about your followers. <laughs> And then, uh, well, Hogan Brown, thanks for also for coming. Oh, yeah, absolutely, how, guys. How can folks find you? Uh, you can check me out at uh, hdbflyfishing.com or Instagram at h to the g to the b. Sweet. Yeah. Perfect. yeah. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys again yeah, for likewise. coming in and talking. Oh, yeah. You guys, you guys are both great um, stand-up yeah. individuals doing a lot of good stuff in this community, and um, it would be awesome to fish with. So if any of you listeners are out there want an yeah, awesome man. day on the water, highly recommend these gentlemen. Right yeah, on. And Thanks, we guys. we just uh we just published our fishing report today. And I just wanted to thank the guys that are participating. You guys are, you know, we can't do that without you. So thanks for taking the time and making those calls. Yep. Find us on uh Facebook at uh Barbless Podcast and uh Instagram. I believe